So we've got our header. Let's now actually add some content onto the page. And this is where the header, we might want to adapt it depending on what look we want to go for in our page, basically. But what we're going to do is we're going to jump out of the header and we're going to go back to WordPress dashboard. So I'm just going to, one of the quickest ways to do it, I always find, is that you just delete, you just delete everything after WP Admin. There are many ways you can do this, but that's just the way I do it. So delete everything after WP Admin and you're back to your dashboard. Okay, uh, so we've got our header. I'm now going to go to pages, all pages, and there's our home page, the one we created initially, do you remember, when we added it to our menu? We're now just going to click edit with Elementor. If you create a page and you never clicked edit with Elementor, what you got to do is go into edit page and click the edit with Elementor button. But if you have done that, the option now becomes visible for you. So just click edit with Elementor. Bear in mind though, you do have quick edit. So if you want to change the name of the page, you can do. If you want to, so let's, this was called home page. What you could have it down here as well, home hyphen page, put a hyphen in between your space for where your space would be. Um, but I'm just going to leave this as home for now. You can also change your template, leave it as default, please. I'm begging you, but no, you can change it. So let's now go to edit with Elemental. Okay, right. So we're now looking at our page and there is our header. And the reason the header is there is because we said on the entire site. And when we move our mouse over, it says edit header. What's really cool about that is we can be building our page. Then we go, oh, I want to change the header. You don't need to go back out to templates. You click edit header and you do it on the page, the same page. And then you'll have the option to say click. Well, let me just do it. Look, edit header. We can now edit the header. And over here we have edit page. We can now edit the page. Eventually we have footer, edit footer. Do, 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 do. You can do it all in the same canvas really, So which is really cool. Let's now add in a banner. Because I find that with websites that when you have a good striking banner to welcome people in, however you want to welcome in, it can grab their attention. And it might be a banner, a product, it might be someone, you, it might be serve, you know, just like a landscape, whatever you want, something that is signifies or connects to your brand, your business you want to get across. So again, we can hit the template folder and we can go to pages and we can literally install an entire page. Look at this. Elemental gives you pre-built pages. You can add in like uh, anyone, like look at this one here. Uh, you can add in this entire page as it is. A DeLorean, the flux capacitor. No, but um, you know, you can add anything you want in. Sometimes though, I find that this can be more work than it's worth. Little components, great. Whole page, you then end up modifying the header, the image, the color schemes, lots of stuff. So nothing wrong with it. You go for what works for you. Or rather than doing an entire page, you could have gone to my templates and, in, and, and added in, say, a template that someone has given to you, you've downloaded from somewhere, a bit like what we're going to be doing here. You know, you can eventually get a copy of this template and use it. Um, or you could go to blocks and I'm going to type in a banner, not banner, sorry, hero. It's called hero banner. And I could add in one of these. So I might say I want to add in um, this section here. And what will happen is, it's going to add in that image, that color scheme, those logos onto your page. And then all you got to do, it's a lovely logo carousel, by the way. You can then go in and modify it to suit what you want. Or you can build from scratch. So we're just going to build from scratch. We're going to hit the plus sign. And for now, I'm going to go with one section. OK, I go into my section settings. Layout is going to be full width. And I'm going to, no, it's not actually, I lie. It's going to be boxed. It's going to be 1,200. And I'll tell you why. If you create a full width section, so right now, let me just show you. No matter how big the screen, it can be this big or that big, okay, the logo is always going to be there at the top. And the menu and the social icons are always going to be there, okay? No matter how big the screen. However, if I go and create a section where now I have an image and I have some words to say, welcome, come and get this great product. 
if you use full width and you've got a really big screen, your text is going to be all the way over here and your image is going to be all the way over here. And it might not look so good anymore, whereas if they're like this, it might look better. So by me saying the boxed width is 1,200 pixels, even when you have a giant screen, the content will always be here. It'll always be roughly in this size area. Is that making sense kind of thing? Sorry, I keep looking down at myself on my screen because I can't see what I look like. I need to have a mirror somewhere, but that's how it's going to look, okay? So I'm going to set the columns gap to be no gap, and I'm going to set the minimum height to be zero for now. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is add in an image as my hero banner. I'm going to go to my style, and I can pick a gradient, so I could pick two colors. I could put in a video. So I could click here and put in a YouTube video. That might add on a few split seconds, milliseconds of delay to your performance or your loading of your web page. Please bear that in mind. You can also add in a slideshow. So I can add in multiple um, slides that come in on the page as your background. Again, that can add a slight split second delay. So again, think about what you want to do. I personally find slideshows so yesterday, whenever I go to a website with slideshows, I go, oh, you know, do something a bit different, but not too crazy. So I'm just gonna go for a, rather than just putting in a blank color like so, let me get rid of that color. By the way, if you do add in a color, let me just do that again. All right, so let's say you've added in a color and you wanna get rid of it. You can't delete it. You go, oh, go away, go away, it won't go away. All you can do is either set it back to white or click on the color and you have the option to make it transparent. So you go, oh, let's just make it transparent like that. That's the way to disappear and get rid of the color. Anyway, we're not really having a color. We're gonna have an image. I click there, and I'm gonna pick this image here. It's one of the images we got when we did Canva. And we are now gonna load that image in, insert media. What? Where's the image gone? We cannot see it because we haven't got any content. That is the house. We have a room, we added in furniture to the house, but until we make some, I, until we space out the rooms, you can't really, I'm, it's not, I'm explaining this in the most rubbish way ever. And I don't know if it's rude for me to have Pepsi Max while I'm doing this, and I'm not advertising Pepsi Max, but I'm gonna have Pepsi Max. But what we need to do is add in some items now to um, basically um, make the image more visible. So, what we're going to do in column one, bear in mind, column one, okay, is 1,200 pixels in width, the room within uh, the house. I'm going to go to column one, and I'm now going to add in a header. So I go over to my grid, go to heading, and drop that in. And I am now going to change this heading to be light bulbs are the future. Bit rubbish that, isn't it? But we're going to go for light bulbs are the future. Okay, right. So I'm now going to go for style and I'm going to change the text color of this to be white. Okay. And I'm going to change the typography as well. So we're going to go in and I'm going to go for Roboto again. Again, you can play around and go with something a little bit different like quicksand, Questrial, Lato, L A T O, Montserrat. Loads of great fonts in here. Okay. We're going to go with Roboto. We're going to set the EM. Remember, I'm using EM, and I'm going to set this to be about four. No, we'll go with three. We'll go with three, okay? And I'm going to give this a little bit of spacing, like so. There we go. A bit of spacing on the letterings there. So I went for about 2.7. We'll go with 2.5. There we go. Right. The weight of this I'm going to set as a 500. 600? No, we'll go with 500. 500 looks okay. Play around with it. There's no right or wrong answer, but try and be consistent with what you do. So if you use... Roboto somewhere in your website, don't switch font unless they work together as a family, they complement each other. Don't go for Comic Sans, and then Arial, and then Times New Roman, because no, it just doesn't work, does it? But you get the idea there. Right, so right now I've added in my, my image still is not very visible, and I've got my heading. What I'm now going to do is go to my section. And I am going to say, no matter what goes in this section, it must be a certain, it must sit a certain position within the house. 
I'm going to zero the margin and zero the padding. OK, so it's right up against the wording. Look at this. Look, it is. It's up against it now. Remember, that's 1,200. That's why it's not going all the way to the left. OK. I go to my section. I go to my padding. I'm going to say that header is not allowed to be more than 150. It must be 150 pixels from the top. And I want it to be a minimum of 300 from the bottom. We can start to see the image appear. Not perfectly, but we can start to see the image. Does that make sense then? 150 from the top and 300 from the bottom. Let me just do that. You can now see a bit of the light bulb there, but can you now see there's the wording is placed a certain placing? Right, let's now go back to our section, go back to our style, go back to our image. When we added the image, these options opened up position, attachment, repeat, size. The position, I could go for center, center. You're going to say, well, that's not perfectly in the center. Actually, it is. Look at this image here. There's the center and there's the center. I could go for center uh, right. That now move goes that way a bit more. I could go center left and you won't see the bulb anymore. God, the light is broken. So let's just go with center, center for now. What happens when I scroll up and down? Well, the image, the text, everything moves synchronized, doesn't it? They move at the same time. If I change this to be fixed, OK, it is still going to do that. Look, so as I move up and down, it is still, sorry, not fixed, sorry. Scr let me get this right. If I pick scrolled, OK, as I scroll, they are still synchronized. If I pick fixed, I'm now fixing that background to an invisible page. That is the way. All right, I'm fixing it. OK, well, this is the way. Sorry. Sorry to upset anyone out there. Right. Um, as you scroll now, the wording moves and the image is fixed to the background, almost like a parallax effect. Now, it's one of those things that people really love. I love it. I love that effect. The repeat, I do not want it to repeat. So if you've got a small image, and it's on a big background. What you don't want to do is start doing the tile effect, which is so 20 years ago, isn't it? The tile effect on websites. Everyone was doing that. Does anyone remember the dancing baby from Ali McBeal? Tile effect. It was too much. Right. If, now, the last thing we're going to do is the size. If I go for contain, that is now bringing through the, the official size of the image. And now I get this dead space at the top here, which I don't like. So I always go for cover. Without fail, I always go for cover. So look, it fully covers the image. All right, no matter how big it is. Look, let me show you. Look, slightly moves because it's the size of the screen. But look, by the way, this isn't going to scroll for me because I've got no other contents. The page is that big. But that now has my image. And when I do have more content on the page, that text is now going to move almost overlapping the image. That's pretty simple, right? I'm now going to right click on my header, OK, and I am going to duplicate it. Now, as soon as I duplicate it, let me undo that. Look at the bottom of that banner. Let me redo it. Oh, let me redo it. It's moved down. Why is it moved down? Well, because we told our section there must be clear daylight of 300 pixels at the bottom. So let's just change that now to be 200 because we've added in an extra item. So have a play, mess around, and you'll get the look you want. This section here, we're going to say light bulbs are the future. Um, what should we say? We'll say um, Elementor. Elementor will light. I can't type. It's because you're all watching me. We'll light the darkness. We'll light the darkness and save you from bad website design. From bad page builders. <laughs> Controversial, hey? Anyway, look, Elementor will light the darkness and save you from bad page builders. Okay, I've done this on purpose this way because I'm going to show you how we have to get around it. I'm now going to go to style. I'm going to go to my typography and I'm going to drop this now to be about. Let's go for. Let's go for two. Let's go for a two and we'll change it to be about a four. There we go. Elementor will light the darkness and save you from bad page builders. In fact, 
Let's go back to the top header. Let's go to typography. Let's transform it to be uppercase. No, it doesn't look good, does it? Leave it as default. It's elemental. I like the darkness on save from bad page builders. Okay, kind of cool. But right now it's going over the bulb, which I don't like. I don't want it to do that. One of the ways you could get around that is if we now go to our column. So that column contains two furniture items, two headers. We can go in now and we could say, if I just do that, zero, zero, I think, I could say now that the, the column, which is a full 1,200 across, in fact, there must be daylight of 600. So 600 pixels, depending on how big the screen is, and remember, it is going to adjust depending on the size of the screen, give me clear daylight. That now looks okay. In fact, I'm going to shrink it a bit and say, give me 400. Let's just see how that looks. Nah, 400's not so good. Let's go with 500. And you can see there's, there isn't massive amount of science behind this, but you can mess around with it. Let's now go to header two. Let's go in over here. And I'm going to go to typography, and I'm now going to change the line height. So I'm going to just increase that to be about 1.1. I think that looks okay. There we go. So there's a bit of spacing there for that part at the moment. And when we view the page, that is how it's always going to look. And when you're scrolling, the text will move up and down. Now then, when it comes to site engine optimization, uh, and you're using any form of plugin for that, you need to be aware of your header one, your header two, your header three, and what content you put in there. When you have a keyword, in this case, it might be light bulbs, might be your keyword, light bulb. Head, this at the moment, this header is automatically set to H2, okay? And I might decide to set this as a H1 header. And this one I'm going to leave as a H2. Bear in mind, though, that if, you're gonna, if your keyword was um, counselling, you've got to somehow get that word counselling in your header 1 and in your header 2 for it to synchronise with your site engine optimization. Okay, so bear that in mind, okay? Don't just put a random headline up there like, welcome, if welcome is not your keyword, because you'll regret it, and then you'll end up having to mess around with your page. So bear that in mind, okay? We're now going to click update. Okay, so we now have a very basic hero banner. But at the moment, what we don't have is a call to action or a lead magnet. What are we doing? Let's now look about talk about that in the next video.